Hello, I'm Ty Mason of the DiabetesCouncil.com, researcher, writer, and I have type 2 diabetes. Today, I'm going to give you my top 10 snacks for those with diabetes. After you watch the video today, I invite you to check out the description box for my new ebook. This is one of the most comprehensive diabetes meal planning books you can find. It contains diabetes friendly meals and recipes, recipes for different goals such as 800 to 1800 calories per day meal plan, diabetes meal planning tips and tricks. There are also tons of diabetes friendly recipes for everyone. Let's face it, one of the main problems those of us with diabetes have is our hunger and trying to find those in-between meal snacks that are satisfying and yet taste good while also helping us maintain our blood sugar. When it comes to snacks, or any food for that matter, I always look at the glycemic load. Now there are those that will tell you that the glycemic index is what matters, and that's okay, but to me the glycemic index doesn't really give you a complete understanding of what a particular food will do to your blood sugar. It simply gives you a number based on 50 carbs of a specific food. And it can tell you how quickly 50 carbs of that food might raise your blood sugar. The glycemic load takes into account what type of carb we are dealing with, the amount of carbs we're eating, and how it truly affects your blood sugar postprandial. Now, I say this so that if you see a food on my list of best snacks and on another expert's list, it's on their worst snacks, well, you'll know why. I'm going to give you the GI and the GL of each food on this list. I also do not put my list in any particular order, so here we go. First of all, popcorn. Now this is a food you will probably see on some worst snacks list because the GI is a little bit high at 55, but the glycemic load of popcorn is a very low 2.8. In its unprocessed form, Popcorn is considered a significant source of whole grain fiber. I love popcorn for breakfast. Yes, popcorn, a little sucrose, and 2% milk is a wonderful breakfast. Now, you may think I'm crazy, and fair enough, but first, give it a try. It truly is a great snack for any time, whether breakfast, afternoon, or evening not just when watching a movie. A small microwave bag is the perfect size for a good snack. Number two on my list is Greek yogurt. Now Greek yogurt is rich in calcium, high in protein and probiotics. There are few foods healthier than Greek yogurt. They do have some carbs, but they aren't that significant. Greek yogurt only has about four grams of sugar per six ounce serving. Greek yogurt contains significant amounts of potassium, calcium, magnesium, which is shown to improve blood pressure. Calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium are important to bone health as well. The GI of Greek yogurt is 11. The GL, 0. Put some strawberries and walnuts in a cup of Greek yogurt, and you are going to thank me later. Speaking of walnuts, they come in at number 3. And I am convinced walnuts are the overall best food you can eat. I know they're a bit expensive. That's why when I can find them on sale or, or bulk, I'll jump at the chance. Stored properly in their shell, in their hull, they can last a long time. Walnuts have a GI and a GL of zero. They have no significant effect on raising blood sugar whatsoever. They are extremely heart healthy. They contain copper, manganese, vitamin B1, vitamin B6. They're super rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Walnuts, top-notch snack on my list. They're a superfood. Number four, strawberries and blueberries. I, I kind of lump these together because I like to eat them together. Strawberries, blueberries, a great alternative to those with a sweet tooth. They are sweet, low in calories, and they make a great snack. Several human studies have established that people who eat plenty of berries, such as strawberries and blueberries, have a lower risk of both diabetes and heart attack, as well as dementia. Studies have also linked the high vitamin C content of strawberries to a lower risk of type 2. Now, one cup of fresh strawberries, 160% of your daily need of vitamin C. You want a really good snack? Blend fresh or frozen strawberries and or blueberries into a smoothie. 
Both the strawberries and blueberries have a low GI in the low 40s as an average. They have an average GL of 4. Number 5 on my list, peanut butter. Now, has anyone ever told you that someone with diabetes shouldn't eat peanut butter? Well, you tell them they're nuts. Peanut butter has a glycemic index of 14, a glycemic load of 6. Low ranking means peanut butter helps to stabilize blood sugar and insulin levels. Yes, there's a lot of calories. You'll see several carbs on the label. But a tablespoonful of peanut butter is an amazing snack to fill you up. It's very low in cholesterol, a great source of niacin and manganese, and that low GI and GL is its good snack for you. Number six on the list is apples. I know another fruit, but a small apple about the size of a tennis ball, maybe a little bigger, will bring you 77 calories, 21 grams of carbs, but only 4 grams of fiber. But it's also a good source of vitamin C and has a smattering of other minerals and vitamins in there. The main benefit of an apple is the richness they possess in soluble fiber. Now this fiber keeps you full. It also slows down the absorption of sugar into your bloodstream, which helps regulate blood glucose levels. Apples have a GI of 39, but only a GL of 4. Number 7, a dark chocolate bar. Now hear me out. I know you're thinking I've lost my mind, but remember, and I may have lost my mind, but remember, I said dark chocolate, not milk chocolate. Huge difference. But listen to this. Italian researchers discovered that health benefits of dark chocolate include significantly improved markers of insulin sensitivity, decreasing fasting insulin, and glucose levels, as well as insulin and glucose responses to the glucose tolerance test. But there is a catch. You're looking for a pretty high quality dark chocolate that has to have a minimum of 70% cocoa. The, the higher the better. You really want to look for those in the 80 to 85 range. But a 70% cocoa bar like Dove's dark chocolate bar that you can get at most grocery stores has a GI of 23, a GL of 4. Dark chocolate is a good snack. Now it can be a bit bitter, but you can learn to get used to that taste for the chocolate value. Boiled eggs is number eight on my list. Eggs are an amazing superfood, and boiled eggs are an amazing super snack. Boil up a dozen or half a dozen, whatever, put them in the fridge. They're awesome with just a little bit of sea salt as a snack. Eggs are a great source of riboflavin, vitamin B12, phosphorus, a very good source of protein and selenium. They're also an excellent source of protein. The GI and GL of eggs, even better, both zero. Number nine on the list, string cheese. Cheddar, provolone, and mozzarella are the best type. They all have a GI rating of zero. That should be enough of an incentive to eat them. They're prepackaged for portion control. They're very filling. They contain a great source of calcium. Some have vitamin D and protein. Number 10 on my list may get me laughed off YouTube, but number 10, peanut M&Ms. Now, I'm not talking about a huge amount here. A fun-sized bag. A fun-sized bag of M&Ms only has 90 calories. You see, the bulk of this candy is a peanut. Very little chocolate. And with a GI of 33 and a GL of 6, it's a great snack. Plus, sometimes we feel like we need to cheat a little bit on our diet plan, don't we? Well, this snack will give us the permission to cheat a little, give us a good feeling psychologically, and yet not harm our blood sugar levels. Now, again, I'm talking about a fun size snack. Don't go out and get the big snack or the big bag or the great big bag and down them and say, hey, Ty said it was okay. It's not every day, but... Fun size peanut M&Ms. It's a good snack. I hope you have found this video helpful. Don't forget to get my new ebook and please subscribe to our channel for many more videos like this one in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ty Mason.